What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my Twisted Life TV. I am Poetry. You are here for another recap and review of Married at First Sight. This is season 14, episode number nine. I did indeed skip number eight. Number eight was a bit triggering for me. I was full of disgust for the entire episode, so I didn't say much at all. Plus, I didn't want to discuss Alyssa. I didn't. Her or Chris. When they exited stage left, I wanted them to be gone for real. I know they will be back again um, because they have to discuss, you know, their divorce all over again. It's part of their contract. Um, if they actually get a divorce at the time they showed them last episode, they weren't divorced yet. They hadn't processed it yet. Okay, so Married at First Sight, um, I think you are doing a, a disservice to these couples. You claim to have been vetting these people, putting them through extensive psychological profiles. Um, I'm not sure how long your process is, but you know, you claim you have done all this to have matched some of these couples based on their opposing views, needs, wants, and desires. Um, I is at some point criminal it's fraudulent you're sitting down giving these people these assessments they're telling you what they want what they need what they're looking for and then you give them the exact opposite they're put into a legal and binding marriage that's fraudulent to me I don't know if it legally fits as fraud because I've been looking for that right I've been looking like for like sites like Match.com and eHarmony. If you get hooked up with somebody who causes you physical harm, what legal responsibility do they have? I have found none at this point. All I know is that the FTC sued Match.com a couple years ago, but they sued them, I guess because they couldn't get them on the fraud thing or the intent to be fraudulent to people, that they got them on um, the, the money in. And basically... When you sign up for eHarmony and, March and Match.com, at least 25% of the matches that you receive are fraudulent. And Match.com knows their fraudulent accounts. They know that they are fake profiles. These people are there to scam you out of money, romantically scam you, phishing, all kinds of things like that. And they are aware of that. And so when the, cus when the, the client decides to cancel their account because they're not finding people to be actually matched with or they running into scams match.com makes it difficult for them to stop their subscription so that's why the ftc sued them they sued them on the money end so i but i think it's just because they there really was no legal term that's out there yet to have somebody responsible for what they're doing like you know you can be cracked out and i think they can get the drug dealer for giving you the wrong drugs or something like that you know i don't know anywho I think that Married at First Sight is really, really dropping the ball. They need some new experts. Or they need these experts to go through training again. <sighs> they have frustrated me to no end. Somebody should be deeply concerned for Katina. I can only assume that our experts are sitting back watching things unfold very carefully in the same manner that they did with Alyssa and Chris. We're watching very closely, making sure, yeah. This girl, y'all have entered her in to an abusive situation and because she hasn't screamed for help or said she needed help, you are choosing not to intervene. And Dr. Viviana had mentioned that that wouldn't be realistic for them to intervene. I think it's very realistic. If you sit around, um, let's say, for example, myself and five other women in the room. I don't even know them. But we five other women in the room. And we all sharing some experiences, some stories, right? And you hear one of them talk about the fact that they are in a relationship that's abusive of some sort, mental, physical, emotional, you know, verbal. At least, we got five people in the room, at least three out of the five people gonna give an opinion about that. 
one person other than the one who's telling the story may sit there and not say nothing at all. And there's going to be at least one out of those five people that's going to offer some type of assistance. At least one of five people. You need help getting out of there. I know some resources for you. Something. So it's not unrealistic for you as an expert who put these people together to step in and give this woman some type of advice or an assistance or resources that she could utilize when she comes across this type of situation. If we always waiting for the victim to stand up, they may never get to that point. They may end up laying on their back six feet in the coffin, six feet on the ground. Okay? I am afraid for Katina. She comes off as a very strong woman. She knows how to verbalize, you know, uh, when she's annoyed. She can even be verbally combative herself, stand up for herself. But when it comes to her mate, it's a different story. I know too many women like this. And it really saddens my heart to see this young lady locked into this type of situation with not an expert in the world on this show or production or anybody sitting there saying to her, you may need to go talk to somebody about what's going on in your marriage. You may need to seek some help. Get some sound advice on what you should do and how you should handle this. I think in an after party, um, Lindsay had brought up how she didn't deserve it. And we know that she could stand up for herself. And just because she's had a boyfriend. Because uh, Jasmina had made the comment. That, you know, she's been through worse. And I took it the same way that, that Lindsay took it. Just because she's been through worse and she's got out of that situation, she knew how to come through it, does not mean that she still deserves what she's going through right now. It does not mean she's going to handle it in the same fashion. Because for me, she's let it, if she was had, had went through worse and got out of it, then she's letting it go on too long in this one. She already know the signs because she's already been through it before. And the fact that she's sitting there allowing it again. Because again, another show. You need to go through the process. We want to see if the experts was right. Maybe I'm reading something wrong. Got her out her second guessing her damn self. Because she's saying, I don't want to feel stupid. In the end. And I think that's what you're feeling right now, girl. You feeling stupid that you're willing to sit here and 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 allow this process to continue just in case the experts were right by putting y'all together. Because I can see why they matched us. And I can clearly see why they shouldn't have. And you can too. We open up this episode with Katina at the grocery store. Shopping for two was essentially new for her. And especially because her man wants everything made from scratch. Now, up until three weeks ago, he wasn't eating everything from scratch. Now, all of a sudden, he wants all his man meals made from scratch. Elijah Wan has a caveman mentality to me. Fucking Neanderthal. If he can keep her barefoot and pregnant for the rest of her life and drag her around from room to room, say, clean this, pick up that, do this, do that, then he would. He should have requested a chef if he wanted homemade scr uh, scr make scratch, meals made from scratch. She go to the store and buy some Pillsbury, you know, oven baked cookies, throw them in there, and he get mad because she didn't use real butter and flour. He want her in there with the rolling pin. You know, don't bring him no store bought shit. Go down to the farm and shuck them peas, and you know. <laughs> I like fresh vegetables from the farm, from the farmer's market and stuff like that too. But still, that, that's, he wants it for every meal. Every meal. As if this was some, the life that he had lived before her. Which it wasn't. When he and her best friend Jabari 
which I'm so mad we have not seen Jabari since. But I told y'all from that episode that he was going to drive a wedge between Katina and Jabari's relationship. I told y'all that, didn't I? I, th I thought I did. I thought I did. Anyway, when him and Jabari had that exchange and he told Jabari that he wanted to try something new, the way they edited that, it made it seem as if he was speaking about his approach to marriage. And he was, but he, what he was speaking of was dating black women. We found out last episode that Elijah Wine has not dated black women. He's biracial, if anybody's confused. You know, he's raised by his white mother, um, but he identifies as a black man. According to Katina, he's fucked black women, but he's never been in a relationship with, with one. I guess black women not worthy enough, or maybe they just too they smart enough, on average, to not fuck with this fool. Um, but for me, it, it clearly shows in how he treats her. Um, he treats her like she's his servant. And I've noticed that from a lot of men who only date outside of their race. Um, that when they go outside of their race, they look for a woman in whatever nationality or whatever race they choose. That's going to be a kiss ass, for lack of better words. Um, mild, meek, timid in his presence to do, do whatever he says type of girl. You know, that's what he's looking for. He wants her to be the perfect wife. And her wanting to be the perfect wife, whatever that is, because she doesn't even know what it means for real either. For her wanting to be the perfect wife, she's just going to get along to get along, okay? But inside, it is eating her the fuck up. The girl looked like she'd been crying. When she started off this episode, she her eyes were so puffy and swollen. When have we ever seen Katina without a beat face? She woke up in the morning with a full face of makeup on. Now she out here at this store looking lonely and destitute. Face just plain. And she fucking tired and exhausted. Baby girl is stressed the hell out. She's saying that she hopes when she gets home. He's not on her back for not getting enough stuff. Katina, baby girl, you could bring home that entire grocery store and he will tell you that you still were not considerate enough to bring him exactly what he wanted. Why do you have to bring the whole store? Cause all I wanted was a bright red shiny Washington apple. But no, you too lazy to go find an apple. Make sure it didn't have no worms and no dents or nothing like that. You too fucking lazy to do that. So you decided to bring the whole fucking store. And now I got to go down up every fucking aisle and lift up every orange and lift up every apple and turn down. You know, pick up underneath the register, check the shopping carts just to find the one apple that I wanted. Because your ass was too fucking lazy to get it. Going to bring me the whole fucking store. That is the type of mentality that Lodge One has. I want to jump through the screen and fuck this man up. I'm going to tell you this week and last week, I have been triggered to no end from the people on this show. And Elijah Wine ain't the only one. Y'all already know how Alyssa was getting to me. Katina, girl. Who else is bothering me like this? Mark? Jasmina? Mm-hmm. Noy. Noy's just annoying me. But we go for it. They pan around to the other couples, right? And um, did y'all notice when they when Lindsay was showing the house and she showed the cats that Mark's cat had a big patch of hair missing on the back of his buttocks? Like it had been biting itself. I bet you it was them bed bugs, poor kitty. I bet you it was them bed bugs. I tore that cat up. Their body language to me shows that they are just getting along for the sake of the cameras. That's it. I think Mark is so weak when it comes to what he wants others to feel about himself or his relationship. Um... 
which is why he always has to belittle Lindsay in public or to them. He throws her under the bus so much. Yes, Lindsay is a bit fucking much. Yes, Lindsay acts like a motherfucking Karen. Yes, Lindsay is just, you know, over the fucking top. Okay? She is. I can't deny that shit. And Lindsay would turn you a new asshole. Whatever information she know about you, that you told her in confidence, she gonna throw that shit back in your face. That annoys the shit out of me out of Lindsay. But Mark only does it just because he is afraid of what the other people think about him in regards to this relationship. But yeah, they show Jasmina and Michael walking down the street. They weren't walking side by side. Uh, she, he was kind of walking behind her at first. And then I know once they got close to the park, you know, they kind of switched places. But initially I was like, that is a very animalistic way of saying hey, you are not my equal. When somebody doesn't walk with their partner, they walk in front of them. That's their way of saying that they're not, they're not equally yoked. Um, they want to be the one in control of the moment at that time. I was like, she training Michael. <laughs> Have you ever trained a dog before? One would tell you not to let the dog walk in front of you um, because then that dog would think that they're in control. It's like a pack mentality type thing. Um, Whoever is leading the way is the one who wants to be the leader of the pack. If you walk with the dog side by side, they're more prone to listen to you, um, see you as their equal, and force you to be one with him. Okay? He's so desperate to be the perfect husband. He's steady searching, asking her, what do you want from me? What do you need from me? It doesn't matter. Keisha Knight Pulliam said it in the, uh, the after party too. Jasmine, you keep saying, communicate with me, communicate with me, communicate with me. And then when he does, I don't want him to talk to me. Don't talk to me. Don't speak to me. And then you say, communicate with me, communicate with me, communicate with me. And then when he does talk to you, uh, don't talk to me in that tone. You know, <laughs> she has to be in control of his emotions she seems to want him to be mild meek emotionless in her presence but she really don't respect the man who does that this is what i'm picking up when i go back to when her stepfather said she likes to be bossy i think this is what the stepfather was saying i told y'all last time we were here she talks to michael as if he is one of her toddler Student, she's a preschool teacher. I think she talks to Michael in that manner. And if this episode is any indication of how their conversations have gone, Michael was not being aggressive with her. He's not being disrespectful to her. If she thinks that he's saying anything that's opposite of what she feels and what he should be saying and how he should be saying it, then she considers that aggressive. And that she don't like his tone. Jasmine, you full of fuck, girl. You full of fuck, girl. Like I said, he's so desperate to be her husband. He just getting along to get along to going to get along to. He can't have no fucking opinion at all. Don't express it. Don't express it with emotion. No, because then he's getting too aggressive. I can see him now begging for her approval in attempts to not piss her off. I mean, because she addresses him with forcible disciplinary work tones. It's okay. And she always says, the only reason why I got this way because of you. You cannot make me believe that this particular scene that they showed here was a one-time incident. That this is the only time that he wasn't getting loud and speaking with an aggressive tone and she took it as such. I believe that is the norm. Now I see why her and Alyssa are so cool. Like on the show, you see her standing up where she was defending Chris. But off camera, her and Alyssa are like this. You can't. I can't see myself consciously being a friend with somebody who is that manipulative, who's that much of a liar, who gaslights people. Mm, I can't see myself being that cool with somebody like that. Willingly? Nah. Nah. So the ladies uh, want, the experts want them to plan dates for each other, um, thinking that these special dates will help them on the road to love. I just don't understand why we're trying to force people into love at week three. 
<laughs> it's week three. I understand that we got into a marriage. We jumped into the marriage first. And we're kind of working our way from there. We're not working backwards. We got into a marriage and now we're building from there. So why we need to rush to where we're going? Oh, because we're trying to get to the process. We have to make a decision in eight weeks. We, that don't mean I have to be in love with you in eight weeks. Why are we fast pacing this process? Half of them say they in love anyway, though. Um, knowing she decides to take uh, Steve on an adventure. Looks like it was a little scavenger hunt, you know, in the park. She left in these little cryptic messages and these little treasure chests all through the park. Um, I lo absolutely love scavenger hunts, y'all. I absolutely love them. And I thought this was a very cute idea, considering that he's adventurous, right? And this is a good idea, a way for her to try to become adventurous. Um, I doubt she came up with it on her own though. <laughs> thank you for production for helping her out. Matter of fact, in every last one of these situations, thank y'all for helping them out. Um, what happened to the treasure boxes? They he went to like four or five different spots. By the time he found no in the end, he didn't have not one. Tre he only had one treasure box in his hand. So production must have been taking those for him too. It was a cute idea. It seemed like it was short, but like I said, the after party, Noy was saying he was out there two hours looking for her, <laughs> trying to figure those clues out. He didn't like come to those answers that quick. Anyway, when he found her, of course Noy had to know. Did you think this was a cute? Was it cute? Was it cute? He said everything you do is cute. You know, you can see how they click and they bond in. Um, at least she didn't ask him this time. On a scale of 100, 1 to 100, how do you think I did? You know, but she still needs that constant reassurance. Constant reassurance. Okay. Over at Lindsay and Marks, it seemed like they still got tension. This is the night after the bowling alley incident, right? Where her and Katina exchanged words. Do I hate to say it? No, I was on Lindsay's side. I was on Lindsay's side this time. Um, I honestly did not see a need for Mark to come at Lindsay like he did. He's always throwing her under the bus. I guess he feels that she shouldn't speak in defense of herself at all. The eye rolling from Katina was very unnecessary. And when she asked Katina about it, she actually did not do it in an aggressive tone. She just said, what's the eye rolling for? I don't care if they had beef before. Mark thinks it's because they had beef before. She shouldn't have said nothing to her. But Lindsay said, like she said, I'm a very direct person. I had a similar incident last night during our live stream. We was talking about a situation and somebody that um, we had a conversation about this matter before. And we were on opposing sides of the, uh, the conversation somewhat. Not completely, but somewhat. And when it came into the stream, I was talking about it. And then they put LOL in the stream and my first thought was the fuck is funny now Lizzie could have said it that way the fuck are you rolling your eyes for the same way I did that would have been in an aggressive combative way she asked her question Lizzie uh, Katina could have simply responded <laughs> I wasn't doing anything the same way that Lindsay did with Alyssa, even though we know that she did. When Liz, Alyssa was like, don't make those faces. And she was like, I ain't, I ain't say anything. Katina could have did that too. She didn't. Okay. It's her choice. Katina could have said, I didn't agree with what you said. Simple as that, you know, simple. But Katina snapped on the girl. But somehow, Lindsay was the one in the wrong. I bet a dime to a dozen, Elijah wanted to tell Katina to check herself. Then again, maybe he did. He 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 tried to pimp her. I mean, not pimp her. He tried to um. What's the word I want to use? Control her actions anyway. You know, her way of thinking anyway. Since she's so immature and such a child, he might have said. And plus, he already told her once before, don't say nothing back to Lindsay. But you know, anywho. Katina's response would have been checked by me. Like I said, that same situation happened last night, you know. Um, so I didn't feel like she had responded in such a way to make Mark act 
act the way she did. Um, like I said, Mark is so worried about his own appearances that he can't seem to hold her down. He can't seem to, you know, just be on her team for a moment. I mean, he could have said, he could have said to Lindsay, you know what, hey, I know you and her don't like each other. I thought it was fucked up what she just did. But for right now, can we just chill? Can we put it aside so we can enjoy the, co the company of everybody else and try to have a good time tonight? He could have said that. But that ain't what happened. He just like really just dug into her, in my opinion. And then after he dug into her, he went to Chris to complain about her even further. And she was in the bathroom flipping out doing that scene, yo. Um, so this one, like I say, she still got beef. <laughs> she still got beef. I told you my biggest issue with Lindsay, though, is that she would take what he says and throw it back at him when she's mad. You know, she would cut him deep. <laughs> and when he said, uh, no, when she said to him, go call your mama, see if you can stay with her or some shit like that. My response to Lindsay would have been, go call yours. Oh, you can't. That's right. That's how petty I would have been. He could have been that way too. But he did throw out another one. He was like, yeah, go have another drink. But see, Lindsay don't think she had a drinking problem. So that really probably didn't hurt her as much if he came back to her with a mama thing. But that's how, you know, he, he at this point he fed up with her stabbing him with the information that he done told her. Now, I don't think they should be throwing zingers at each other at all um they don't seem to have any respect for one another at all i think that she really wants to tell him to go grow some balls man up and he wants to tell her to shut the hell up as soon as she wake up in the morning over her eyes <laughs> he like her sex he do i think he actually like her he not in love with her but i think he like her but i don't think he want the other people to know how much he like her because they so annoyed with her so he got to be just as annoyed he's weak and gullible he's a weak and gullible man weak and gullible <sighs> but i still don't see no chemistry between them at all i still have it from the beginning they don't even act like friends when they're hanging out to me um they the, the way that they are moving to me is like okay i was set up on this blind date i told my friends i was gonna make the best of it so i guess i don't stick it out you know and this is like one long never ending date that's what how i read them together um oh, you know and and men men will keep making the best of it and keep having sex with them no matter how tumultuous it seems men do it all the time they have fuck with a chick that they know they could never be serious with but since she willing to fuck they will you know what i'm saying and women y'all ain't off the hook either we ain't off the hook either we do it too we fuck with a dude just because he does nice things for us okay and spends time with us and we don't even like the sex okay but we don't want those nice things or those companionship to go away so we deal with them that's Mark and Lindsay to me. That's Mark and Lindsay to me. And she was like, I don't think that you even care for me. She's looking for some type of indication that he cares. I don't think he really does, sis. I don't, right? <laughs> you know, he appreciative of the things that you was doing for him. He was appreciative then when you was doing them. He was appreciative. But now, anything you do for him annoys the shit out of him. Because now he sees it as a way of you controlling his life. He's so oblivious, oblivious, uh, oblivious, whatever, non-caring. He just hasn't picked up. He ain't even picked up on the fact that she only having a conversation in one word. One word answers is what she's been giving him since the beginning of this episode. That's not Lindsay. Lindsay is full of conversation. He ain't even picked up on that at all. The tension in the air was so thick. It was thick as that damn steak he was trying to cut. I don't know if he was trying to cut it with a butter knife or what, but he was having a hard time cutting through that steak. He asked her, didn't she think she was out of line the night before? And I'm like, about what? So was she. No. 
she is sick of him coming down on her and not giving her any ounce of kindness. Um, Lindsay says that uh, that he's one way when the camera's on and another way when the camera's off. All of these couples are saying that. That's one of Jasmina's things too is that he's one way when the camera's on, one way when the camera's off. Whatever. They should just call it quits. I don't think any of these couples are going to make it any longer. You know, I had hope for Jasmine and Michael, but just go y'all separate ways. You know, get, put my mind at rest. Okay, so, um, where was I at? He's upset that she doesn't cower every time because he is in the room. Yeah, okay. I'm talking to my own notes. Um... You know, and she says, you know, she's trying to give him some 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 leeway. Like, I know you're going through a lot right now, dog, you know. But all of that stress that you're going through, you deflecting it off and putting it off on me. And he was like, no, my life ain't in chaos right now. I was like, okay, if it wasn't for Lindsay, where the fuck would you be living right now? You would be homeless, okay? Where would your belongings be? Who would be caring for your grandmother and making sure all her administrative work is taken care of? You ain't been doing it. Lindsay stepped in and done that shit in the past Three weeks of you knowing her. She's taken over that. She's had to throw on a cape for you. To keep you from falling. And you like. Well, I wasn't going to hit that hard. That's how he is. I was on Lindsay's side. I just was. All Mark can say in response to her. And what she's saying. Yeah same. I feel the same about you. No, she's very detailed about her concerns. She's she pinpoints shit out. You know, she feel unappreciated. She feel uncared for. And you know, what is it that you do like about me? You know, it was crickets at first. I was like, girl, it's the sex, okay? That's it. And the fact that being married to you is giving you a free, giving him a free place to stay. Mark needs that apartment right now. You know, I can see the two she was fighting back. And but Lindsay is not in any way gonna let them to his fall in front of that man's face at all. Mm -mm. She's not gonna give him the time of day. He said, you have been a caring, you have a caring, loving person buried inside of you. I said, oh, that's insulting. Lindsay felt it was insulting. Yes, Mark, that was a dig. Because honestly, caring and, and loving is what she has been showing you until you piss her off, okay? She's been 100 from the jump and you keep pulling back. But she said, now, she at 1%. You was turning your nose up at that 99, and she ain't willing to give it back to you no more. Lindsay done said this about four times, though. She done said this about four times. You know, um, he keeps saying it's just the communication, the communication. She's like, no, it's more than just communication. Marcus, about you a ball face lie. You know damn well it's more. You know, then he did the Chris. Well, if you're still going to give that 1%, you know, that's better than nothing. What he's saying is, I'm going to hold on to this free apartment as long as I can. <laughs> that's what he's saying. So Michael had set up the date for Jasmina. He took her and the dog on a picnic. <clears throat> he wanted to bond with the dog to make his relationship with her better. He got the dog gifts, you know, and then they immediately went left. Like I said, I have no longer have hope for them either. No longer. <sighs> they are their own worst enemy. They could work. They could work, but they sabotage themselves. And I agree with Michael in this whole ordeal. In both of their disagreements, he, they both agreed that they both raised their voices slightly. Their tonality changed in their disagreements, as you probably would do when you disagree with somebody. You see how my face just got scratched up? My face would do this if I'm disagreeing with somebody. You know what I'm saying? If I did this while talking to Tina, she would tell me, calm the hell down. She agrees that she raises her voice, but again, she countered it as if that it's only done because if he had read the room and knew how to have a basic conversation, then we wouldn't be having this problem. So he asked her, what is the best way for me to communicate to you in these moments? He don't know her. You know what I'm saying? He trying to get an understanding with her of what is the best way to communicate. Now, she actually said it, but I don't think it registered deeply. She said, just talk to me like we're doing now. However, Jasmina, 
that is not realistic. It's when people speak with something with passion, when they speak with the purpose of making a point, your tone, your pitches, your body language shifts naturally. This man is not a fucking robot. He is human. He's allowed to have emotional responses, which she does not appreciate from him. I agree with him when he says how I normally communicate with my family, friends, or in, in conversations, and how you normally communicate may be different. She's used to talking to children on a regular basis, so that's how she talks to other people around her. They come from different places from being around different people, having different experiences in life, right? So just saying communicate to me normally does not help him get an understanding of how to communicate to you specifically. He's not supposed to know how to read your fucking mind. Y'all have known each other for three weeks, which is why he keeps asking you to help him understand, help him communicate better with you. Now, she did say again, she did explain it, but for some reason, it still went left in her. She wants him to be emotionless. But she can get flustered. Okay. She's annoyed that he's annoyed. He need to check his annoyance. You know, don't be annoyed with her. Like she fucking perfect. Jasmine is condescending as hell. Oh, she's condescending as hell. If he speaks towards anything that is not in line with what she thinks it feels, he needs to calm down. And I'm like, calm down for what? He ain't turned up. He's frustrated. He's annoyed. You know, he's thrown off. He's lacking understanding. What I tell y'all when we was here last time, she talks to him like one of her preschoolers. She talks to him in a way to saying, you are beneath me, young peasant. Okay. I'm right. You fucking wrong. I'm the adult in this situation. Now deal with it. That's how she talks to him. <sighs> if this, like I say, if this interaction is any example of how they were discussing matters beforehand, Jasmina has a very inflated idea of what was an aggressive tone from him. Being annoyed, like Michael said, is a human emotion. And she acting like she ain't annoyed right now. And if she is, it's his fucking fault that she annoyed. Girl, bye. You full of shit, the Jasmina. You full of fuck. Because at no point during this conversation was he disrespectful to you at all. You trying to police his tone. And tell him he doesn't have a right to have a feeling about how this conversation is going. Or have a feeling about the fact that you want clearly expressed to him in a way that he can understand how to talk to you. How to have a disagreement with you. She got an attitude. Because of what he wants clarified. And what he was asking and expressing. She don't feel like doing it. You know what I'm saying. Now, I will say that this whole interaction that she's having with Michael, what Michael needs from his wife, is exactly what Jasmina told the experts she did not want. She did not want to get into another relationship where she feels like she has to be the one in charge and training him and leading him and guiding him. But that's the type of person that Michael needs right now because this type of the person he's trying to become, the man he's trying to become, he doesn't know how to get there and be there. So he, she need, he needs her to help him. But that ain't what she wanted. And I think that's what Jasmina is annoyed with the most. Because this is not what I asked for. This is exactly what I told the fucking experts I did not want. And they gave to me anyway. Outside of that, she, could, she liked Michael. They have fun. They can laugh and joke like I said in the beginning. They have the potential to make it work. But these two motherfuckers just won't get out of their own goddamn way. But she's very condescending. She's very supercilious. It's just, mm. I don't know how much time I got. It's gonna be a long video, y'all. I'm sorry. So we go over to Katina and O, and they still have beef. Apparently, after the little housewarming, he wanted her to clean the floor. He wanted, he wanted to clean the floor up. And he explained it a little later. I got where he was coming from. I do know people that will, will not go to bed with a dirty house. Have a big party and dishes in the sink. Some of us will say, I'll get to that shit in the morning. You know, I, I don't have roaches or nothing like that. So, 
I know if I get to the morning, I get to it in the fucking morning. But some people will not go to bed with the dirty house, right? So I understood. Um, at least what we've seen here, he didn't express that to her. He expressed that to the fellas later on, right? But he wanted to clean the floor. Katina said, I do half. You know, it's a partnership. You want to clean the floor? I do half, right? That was the issue for him. Because he feels like cleaning the floor is her job any fucking way. He was being kind to suggest, let's clean it together. And then when she said, okay, I'll clean half, how fucking dare you? It's your fucking job anyway. So he got to know it. He said, fine, go to sleep. And she did. So since he don't go to bed with a dirty house, he stayed up and cleaned the floor for her. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. You clean the floor for you. You don't want to have a problem going to bed with a dirty house. You don't want to want the floor clean. You clean the floor for you. Okay. He asked her, what's her definition of a wife? And she said, you know, a partner, support system. But the issue is that you feel like I'm not cooking enough for you. I cook for you, but you don't think I cook enough. Um, or fulfilling my wifely duties enough for you. And I'm like, what the fuck in the world is a wifely duty? That caveman mentality. Remember, Pastor Karen brought that up before, you know. Like, what time are you think we living in, sir? Okay. Considering that Katina is a woman who does not cook at all. She's a food blogger. She goes out to eat on most occasions. The fact that she is not making an attempt to cook anything for him is, 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 a, is a, a leap in the right direction, right? She's willing to do it. She's willing to do the cleaning, but she's like, let's do it together, you know? Um... But he wants her to be the wife to jump in. Well, he said, I want the floor. Let's clean the floor. And she, he wanted her to say, go on here, baby. Go to bed. I got this. That's what he wanted her to say. <laughs> and that's what he wanted her to say. And instead, he ended up doing it. So he feeling like the bitch right now. That's what that is. That's all that is. Okay. He wants his wife to jump when he say jump. My words, not his. Okay. First of all, oh. She ain't your child. She ain't your servant. She ain't your maid. She ain't your butler. She's not your employee. And she's not a fucking slave. Y'all had just been up drinking and partying the night before. Kicking it with friends all night. I'm fucking tired. Okay. I'm fine with cleaning the dishes in the morning. Okay. <laughs> Everybody may not be like that. Depending on how much the dishes is. Maybe I'll rinse some stuff off. You know, so the house won't be stinking and shit, but I'm not finna go full on. I might load the dishwasher up and turn it on at the end, but full on cleaning, I'm gonna take her in the morning, okay? You know, I'm tired, get some rest. He better be glad that I offered to do half. Cause like say for me, it could've could, could waited till the morning. But since you want it done so badly, sir, knock your fucking self out. While I'm knocked the fuck out in the bed, okay? Talking about, but as an adult, when your husband say something, bow down. Like she a fucking child. Like he a king. And she just a, me a little mealy mouth peasant. I got mealy mouth from uh, Miss Honey. I love when she used that term. <laughs> he says you should respect me. As my wife, if I agree to help, don't throw a hissy fit, okay? When you tell me it's cool to go, go ahead and go to bed and I do it. He said, well, I'm your husband, not your boyfriend, not your friend. And he said that, I said, yo, my husband should be my friend. Okay, and you telling me that we not friends? Why are we together? We don't, we, I mean, we. I, mm. you saying that you're not my friend. Well, so for some reason you demand I be your servant. I'm your help mate, not your servant, sir. This is not what a being a submissive wife consists of. And I don't think you even know what a submissive wife really truly is. I mean, she, who is she submitting to? Because you're damn sure not a leader. 
Then he says, see this ring? I'm your husband. You need to know what that means. You need to fucking recognize what that means. He didn't say the word fucking out of here, but you know. <sighs> Look here, sir. You see that woman? See that ring on her finger? She your wife. You're supposed to show love to her as you would show to God. She's supposed to be your temple, your home. But that ain't what she getting. All she getting is belittlement. Talking down to her as if she's beneath you. Katina was like, you know, I know a man has certain needs and expectations of a wife. And I'm willing and able to step up and do that and be there for him. Um, but she didn't realize that no matter what she does, that she still would never measure up to his standards. <sighs> My leg itching. Still would never measure up to his standards. She didn't realize that. I swear when I heard him talk to her, it's all I could hear him saying is, hop on one foot. Now bark like a dog. Er, er. Like bark like a big dog. Woof, woof, woof. You know, coming to America, right? Now get down and lick my boot. And then when he, she gets down to lick his boot, he kick her in the face because she wasn't hopping high enough. She wasn't barking loud enough, right? And damn sure he didn't like the way that she licked, right? She was going vertical. He wanted her to lick horizontal. So when she decided to do horizontal, he wanted it done in circles. That's the type of motherfucker he's showing himself to be. And the experts have not stepped in at all because they're watching very closely and monitoring each and every relationship. Right? Remember his brother had said that he was going to mold Katina into the woman he wanted to be? He going to break her down first. You got to break that clay down. When you try to mold a piece of clay, you have to maneuver it. Change its shape and its form. Add some water to it to make it liquefy. It, he's going to break her the fuck down. To the woman he claims, he don't even respect the type of woman. He want a woman that's not going to just let him walk all over him. But that's exactly what he wants. That's exactly what he's doing to Katina. He don't feel like he's doing it, huh? Because she need to know her place. See that damn ring? Stick that fucking ring up in your eye, boy. The experts send them over that little 20 question game, right? Get them deeper into knowing each other and in each other's mind. Hopefully open up some real emotions. And I was like, this ain't finna go good. <laughs> Noy and Steve first question is have you ever been in love? Noy said she thinks one time. I was like, You think you you think you've been in love? You ain't sure. But you are sure you're in love with Steve right now. Steve says all of the serious relationships he's been in, he's loved them all. Um, Noy is taken aback and a bit perturbed by that because she's like, Well, why he don't love me? He he could tell them five people that he loved them because he's had time to build with them, to get to know them and understand them. He's known you for three weeks. On day three, knowing you told this man you was falling in love with him. She says that for her to know she's in love, the man has to show up for him, for her, his, her time of need when she's at her lowest. And I was like, well, Steve hasn't had that chance to show up for you in any, any situation. Um, I guess when he was making her attempts to help her learn how to swim and things like that, she may have considered that as showing up but she was already in love with him by then so I don't understand how this love of Steve developed okay she just wants him to say it she'd rather be comforted with a lie than be you know hurt by the truth um I don't think he was apprehensive about saying it I just don't think he was in love but then he proved me wrong later on okay I think Noy is really immature um Steve got a lot of patience and he's very considerate in in, in her opinion and because um, he's now said that he loved her. Like I said, he said he changed his mind at the end. She's going to overlook the fact that he don't want to work. She will. I'm steady arguing with somebody on Twitter about the work thing too, y'all. Lord have mercy. This person said that Steve is probably rich. And I was like, that boy ain't rich. That's why his whole family is worried about him having a job, right? And then they was like, well, I retired at 30, but my whole family still think that I need to have a job. I was like, your ass ain't rich either. You can't, just because you got a little bit of money in your pocket don't mean that you're rich. 
but you ain't rich either. Rich people don't have a problem with motherfuckers outside of their relationship or outside of their home and their family trying to get them to have a job. Most cases, rich people, their family members trying to get the money from them. They don't give a fuck about them having a damn job. And if you listen to the words that's coming out of Steve's mouth, he picks up freelance work in order to get by. Rich people don't need to get by for freelance work. Y'all making all this goddamn excuses for Steve because he's a white dude. I'm telling y'all. He's Asian still, you know. If there was a brother, oh my God, they would be turning him a new asshole. And because he's kind and considerate, he's patient with noise, fragile ass. Y'all giving Steve a pass. Whatever. <sighs> Elijah Wan feels that devotion is what would make him fall in love. I guess he don't feel that Katina's devoted to him at all. Remember, he's never been in love before, so I guess he ain't never got devotion at all. Katina says a whole lot, but what I, I want him to hear her say is that the man has got to be her best friend. And sir, that was directed directly to you, okay? Especially when you was telling her that you were not her friend. Katina seems so sad, but somewhere in her mind, she could still see potential to fall in love with him. And that's how women end up in abusive relationships. He do one little nice little thing for you, and she say, well, he not that bad. I'm sure he didn't mean it. And next thing you know, he's slapping you and calling you a bitch. And you wonder how the fuck you got there. She told tells him that she sees the potential. He's like, yeah, I know you love me. I know you love me. I know you're about to say it. And she's like, no, I wasn't about to say it. I didn't want to scare you away. What? This saddens me. It really saddens me to know that she thinks this is what love looks like. He's like, nope, mm -mm. I ain't in love, okay? It takes a lot and you haven't lived up to my standards yet. I like you, but that's it, you know? I was like, ooh, well, he is a master manipulator. Got her right where he want her. Right under his foot, his foot in, his, in her neck, that's where he want her. Because she says, well, I'm going to do more to show you that I can be the wife that you want. He said, talk is cheap. I'll believe it when I see it. Katina, girl, if you don't stop trying to prove yourself to this motherfucking clown, get out. Get out, girl. Get out. Every season, I sit here yelling at the screen, like, why is everything we see so one-sided? Why is it oh trying to be the man that she wanted? Okay. Um, even with knowing and Steve, it's him breaking her out of the shell, trying to be more adventurous, right? Don't see her trying to make his ass get a job so she could feel more financially secure. Lindsay and Mark, you know, they exactly what they asked for. <laughs> they exactly what they asked for, for real. But he can't take it. Be careful what you ask for because you just might get it, okay? Luckily, she didn't have no expectations for real. Jasmine and Michael. Michael is exactly the person she did not want, except for the beard. They got a lot in common, but again, she did not want to have to teach a man how to be vulnerable with her and what the hell you know, she needs in a relationship. It's ridiculous, but she ain't meeting his needs either, right? He's steady trying to be what she needs, but she ain't trying to be what he needs. Um, so we go over to Michael and Jasmine, and we found out today is the anniversary of his brother's death. Girl, it's a black child named Vladimir. His brother name was Vladimir. Vladimir ain't Vladimir like a Russian name or something like that. Vladimir Cadet. He didn't tell her about it, so he went to the cemetery alone. And Jasmine is like, I wish I would have known. He's like, Yeah, you was at work, but that's still something that you don't have to carry alone. You have a wife now, a partner. But they hadn't spoken since the picnic, right? I'm petty like that. You know, every time we talk, you say I'm getting loud, so I'm not gonna say shit to you no more. Um. So they really haven't spoke to each other. She feel like he don't know how to talk to her. So she ain't talking to him either. Other than hi and bye and how was your day? That's all that they say to each other. So what I did like from their conversation over everybody else's is when they ask, what does it make you to feel in love? They talked about their own actions in the relationship about being willing to open up and learn more and communicate better. Not how the other person is making them feel. They were the only couple that 
when they that was addressed with that question, they talked about themselves, what they need to do for themselves to make them be open enough to receive love from somebody else, while everybody else talked about how the other person should make them feel for them to fall in love. Um, okay. When she asked him um, why have they had vulnerable conversations, or why he hasn't opened up, his answer didn't make sense to me. He started talking about he promised to be vulnerable from day one, but you just said you weren't vulnerable and you hadn't been having those conversations with her. So her question was, why not? And she picked up on that too. That ain't what I asked him. I asked him, why aren't we having these conversations? So I'm going to answer it for you. I'm going to answer it for you. Y'all don't trust each other. <laughs> Simple as that. You do not trust each other. You're both waiting on the walls to come tumbling down and then you go into the defense at one slight crack. So it's hard for somebody to be vulnerable with you if as soon as there's a crack you both put up defense it's trying to protect your own self from being hurt mark is wishy-washy he said he's been in love but when things don't work out he gets with somebody new if the grass ain't greener then he try to hop back on the fence to the person he just left in other words he's always searching for the next best thing and when it's not what he hopes it is he tries to circle back okay Liz is like, nah, bro, uh-uh. I just recognize what good it was I had in the person I left. I recognize what it is that I didn't like in the person that I went to. And I use that information to move on to my next relationship and hopefully do better. Ain't no looksy backsy. And I feel that's what a lot of men do. So that's why they try to hold on to old girlfriends. Telling them, oh, we friends. We be family for life. Because they want to keep that link, that bond, in case they want to go back until they find the next new thing to try. And I think that a lot of men do that. I, I don't. I, I honestly don't see that a lot with women. Women get so emotionally attached that, like I said, they don't want to lose their companionship. They don't want to lose that friendship. Who did I say that about? I think I said that about another video. Anyway, next day the men go out. They do archery, and the ladies look like they had a spa. I wasn't sure at first. Um, I realized Lindsay and Noy wasn't there yet. Yeah, Noy finally came. I'm so. Um, I wouldn't be going anywhere with these people. Maybe because Lindsay. It's so desperate to be Jasmina's friend and she likes Noy, that's why she went, but I wouldn't have went. Um, but luck but luckily that they didn't have a bad time. Noy really didn't give an opinion one way or the other, you know, on a lot of things. So I, I say, Lindsay, I guess she'll be okay. We know Jasmine and Katina, they really get along. Um Katina says Noy DMs her all the time. She ain't got an issue with Lindsay though, so yeah. That's what she said. That's what Katina said. I really ain't got an issue with Lindsay. I was like, girl, you cannot stand that girl. But okay, you willing to be open up and be open and receptive of her? Fine. So she was able to open up a little bit and talk about the tensions in her marriage. And I was like, was it just me? Or did Jasmina seem thoroughly pissed off during the whole conversation? Oh, on the other hand, is at the archery, saying Katina is not putting forth any effort into the marriage. She's lazy. She's a child. She acts like a baby. You got to teach her how to be an adult. And he's doing everything. I was like, bro, I'm confused. Why is it so hard for you to adjust to living with your wife who's not picking up after you, catering to your needs? And this is how it was just three weeks ago for you. Why is the struggle so real for you now? I'm really struggling. I'm really struggling. He said he is wondering, do he need to break a chair for her to understand that he is being beat? And I think he wanted the men to say, yeah, dog, I understand that. But they all sat there and looked at him in astonishment. And he was like, I mean, I'm just tired. And her and Michael go, I can just really see the pain in his face. That's lies. That's manipulation. He manipulating y'all too. I mean, this girl ain't putting forth no fucking effort. If you don't get the fuck on with that bullshit. The look on Mark's face was like, is this nigga crazy? That's how the look Mark looked. He is serving up classic woman beater, okay? My wife won't wash the dishes and put them away. I mean, she did wash the dishes, though, for your ass, though. But that's not how I want it done. I want them put in the cabinet. Well, she put them in the cabinet. I didn't want them in the right side. I wanted them on the left side. Okay, well, she put them on the left side. Well, why she leave them turned down instead of turned up? That's how that mother, ooh. Now he playing victim. Shut the fuck up. Oh. Hmm. Okay, where was I going? I 
So Jasmine and Michael, they have this conversation. Where I'm somewhere, I lost my whole talk. Talk, 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 talk. I realized Jasmine is born in the year that I graduated high school. She had a necklace on in 1991. That's <laughs> when I got out of high school. Anyway, Steve said it really took him. Uh, it, oh, they still at the spa and the archery. Steve said it really took him to express how he felt for her to be heard, for him to be heard and seen by her. You know, he was pissed off that she walked out and, and, and pretty much ghosted him for 24 hours. And Noy was like, you know, the fact that he was hurt made her realize that he really does love her. I was like, that's how you got love out of that, you know? Okay, but okay, girl, go off. I'm gonna let her have that because he did end up telling her he loved in the end. Okay, anyway, Mark had his date with Lindsay. Damn, this video long. He took her to her favorite sushi spot, you know, Jasmine is up a gym training session where she was his personal trainer. You know, each station was supposed to help them work out different areas in their relationship where they're having um, problems. Um, when they sat there and did the split, no, the, the split stretch, Jasmine was really being considered that Michael has little short arms. <laughs> he didn't reach her at first, right? And she gonna blame it on the fact, you're not flexible, are you? Me, either. no, he's short, dog. No, he's a shorty. You know, they have the potential, like I said, if they both can get out of their own way. He was barely hanging on to her fingers. I was like, stop stretching. Just sit there eating and stab with each other and hold each other's hands. Oh, but this was a serious moment, right? You know, um, he started talking about his brother's death. Maybe I was teared up. Oh my goodness, that thug tears was coming all down my face. All I wanted to wanted was for Jasmina to hold him. She was saying comforting words, you know, but like I said, they are still learning each other. She was saying comforting words and she did get closer. But I really think that he needed the physical touch at that moment. I think that physical touch would have meant so much more than words. She didn't cry. And I, I, she, in the confessional, she broke down. She broke down tears. And everything she said in the confessional, I wish she would have said to him. But she needed, she wanted to be strong for him. She didn't want him to back off of what he was expressing to her and sharing with her and she showed that she was crying too so O takes Katina to a cooking class where they both cook she says cooking ain't fun for her but you know they doing it together and they can make things fun get this mass class of fun the food was exactly what she loves so they they're enjoying the meal and the turn down begins he's going on and on about how good the food was and she says you know you act like I haven't cooked for you all week you know his response was, you haven't cooked for me like this since I met you. He is talking quality of food. Or was he talking quantity? I think quantity. Just like when in the beginning she said that she gonna hope he don't be mad at she ain't he ain't bought enough. He had the nerve to say, I can see she did the work to be a better woman for herself. But that does not make her a good wife for me. And he don't think that she enough woman for him as a wife. I'm sorry, what makes you a good husband? A man, enough of a man for her. Tina has had so little as far as relationships goes that she's thinking that he's the bee's knees, right? So he already got that in his head that he's the shit. And so by her saying that she's really stroking his ego, right? Can't nobody tell him that he's not a man. Can't nobody tell him he's not enough. He far from it. You know, she's not even deserving of the man that he is. Katina feels like she is putting forth effort, right? He's like, you young. You still learning. I'm already there. I already got a mortgage. You know, stuff like that. Then he says, she puts... They were doing a housewarming, right? And she's like, we decorate the house together. We had to go shopping and get the stuff together, right? Um... He says, you only were decorating the house because I was there. But your lazy ass had your friends go pick up the food. You couldn't even put effort into decorating with me and go get the food. Lazy bum, you know. I'm doing all I can to help her decorate. Because that's woman's work, right? And then she got the nerve to can't even go out there and get the food. She had to go phone a friend. into my housewarming. I was like, wasn't it her housewarming too? I thought that was being resourceful. If I'm up here working with you, why the fuck did I, you know, I got a friend and go pick it up for me. She can pick it up on the way <sighs> 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 
He says, I cannot settle with somebody that doesn't have a base on how to be an adult because they don't have a life experience of sleeping with a mother and a daughter. I'm adding that part on her. That's what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? I done slept with a mother and a daughter. I done got some world experience. Katina, girl, when is enough going to be enough, sis? When is enough going to be enough? The constant cutting you off when you're trying to talk, trying to get a word in edgewise. That was my first straw, okay? This nigga been coming for you all week long, been coming for you since the fucking marriage. And you keep saying, I'll do better. I'll do better to prove it to you, to show it to you. No, fuck that, okay? You are not flawed, Katina. I hope you listen. You are not flawed, okay? You're not as flawed as he's trying to convince you are. You may have some flaws, but not the way he's trying to convince you are. Don't take that shit to heart, girl. Like, don't take him into your fucking heart. He needs to ground you. He needs to have you beneath his feet. And she said I needed a break. He wouldn't even give her that. Okay. She's like, I need a break from this conversation. She was trying to take her mic off. The producer production didn't come over to help because they wanted this conversation to continue going on. Hell, Elijah Ron probably threw them a fucking head. Nah, no, no, we finna have this talk right now. He probably did that. They just cut that scene out, something like that. Because nobody ever came over there to assist her to get that mic off so she could take this fucking break that she needed to take. And they just allowed her to sit there and be berated by this fucking man and try to prove her worth to this fucking man. And then he like, well, only time can tell. Yeah, I heard you saying it, but no, I don't believe you. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. It's time to go, baby girl. That's what he's telling you. She said that his words feel like fists to her. If his words hurt you that much, sweetheart, then they are fists. It's time to walk a fuck away. The way she broke down, the way she was crying at the end, that's exactly how I felt she was starting this episode off. I was so frustrated. So frustrated. Thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for um, always commenting in the comment section. I really appreciate it. Uh, apologize for this video being so long, but it had to be said. It had to be said. I'm really saddened by this shit. I, I really want to fuck him up for her. <laughs> I know violence is not the answer, but. Ooh, child. Peace.